Hello everybody and welcome to Spicy's Hidden Worlds. Today we're going to cover one of my favourite beetles, the stag beetle. The stag beetle is the largest beetle we get in the UK, with males ranging from 25 to 75 millimetres long and females from 30 to 45 millimetres long. You can easily tell males and females apart by the fact that the males have these really big pincers, these mandibles on the front, which they use to fight other male beetles for a female. This is why they're called stag beetles. Like male deer, stags, rut each year for females, they do the same thing. Males will grab another male beetle round the middle and literally throw it off of a log. Females have very small mandibles on the front. Now people fear the males because you know, they've got a big set of jaws on the front and people think they're going to do them the damage. Not at all. They can squeeze with them but not with that much force. The females are the ones that you'd actually get a worse nip from if they tried to bite you. Very little is actually known about the stag beetle. It used to be a lot, lot more common in the past and it's become quite rare these days. And it wasn't until 1998 when the People's Trust for Endangered Species started a public campaign to get people to record when and where and at what stage of life they've seen these beetles. And it's only from that that we've truly understood what we know about stag beetles today. They're widespread in southern England, especially around the Thames Valley, North Essex, Southern Hampshire and West Sussex areas. Outside of these areas, you may see them, but in other areas of the UK, they are thought to be extinct. In other words, you will not see them there. As a species, they have been in real trouble in the UK, although they can be found throughout Europe, East Asia and as far as Japan. There's one other species of stag beetle in the UK you could confuse them with, but they're much smaller and it's the lesser stag beetle. But the way you tell them apart is the fact that the wing cases on a stag beetle are like a maroon brown colour with a black thorax and then the, the horns or the, the mandibles are more of a reddy colour. Whereas in on the lesser stag beetle it's all black and indeed a lot smaller. They never get these really big antler type mandibles. The life cycle of the stag beetle is very interesting and it does show probably why they've been in such decline in recent years. The adults will lay their eggs in rotten tree stumps, rotten logs, roots of trees that are rotten, particularly oak they favour but they will use other species and the larvae will hatch there and live within that log for up to four years. It will then pupate which is similar to a caterpillar turning into a butterfly and the following flight season it will come out as an adult beetle. Now they were thought to only last for a few months but it's been shown that some will overwinter if they can find somewhere warm enough to uh, sort of hibernate as it were. So in theory you could see one of these beetles at any time of the year but the main time you're going to see them is between April and September with a peak in June. As I say, they're in great decline in the UK and you can probably put it down to that four years as a larvae in a rotten log. The problem is, in recent years, people don't leave rotten logs around. They want to clear up and tidy up with wood management and things like that. Rotten trees are taken down and moved away. It's very important to have that rotting wood there for them to live in. So if a tree falls, starts to rot, and then the beetles lay their eggs in it, the chances of that log being left there for more than four years is quite unlikely in any populated area. And this is probably why it's impacted on their species so badly. Now through running a moth trap I've come to realise that stag beetles are positively phototactic. Now what does that mean? Well phototaxis, if you look at the Latin, photo means light, taxis means movement, so it's an organism which moves towards or away from light. If you're positively phototactic that'll mean you'll move towards light, if you're negatively that means you'll move away from light. So a positively phototactic thing would be something like a moth, a stag beetle, a leaf, a plant, you know. As I'm sure you've seen from this video, they're a very charismatic beetle, great looking, great attitude to them, and they're very warm, they get very, very feisty, and they stand up in this posture where they show off their mandibles, and this is what they do to each other. The males will stand on a log and really fend off each other before they get into a fight, and it's as simple as whoever gets thrown off the log loses. As I say, it's one of my very favourite beetles, and so far this year I've seen about four or five males. Unfortunately, I found a male which had been eaten, um, it seems to be very characteristic that they have their body eaten off and the legs are chewed off but the, the rest of them is basically left intact and, and what's doing this I'm not really sure. If you can see here there's a video of one I found in the grass next to my moth trap. The only thing I can think of is maybe hedgehog. I've had hedgehogs are attracted to my moth trap and will eat the moths as they land around it. As you can see they're a great beetle, feel very lucky if you get to see one and don't fear them. And a thing that really does surprise some people is the fact that they can fly. I'll catch you next time. And then with that southerly wind, it brings them inland. As you can see, they're a very striking looking moth. And then you see the underwing, and it's even more striking. 